YouTube. Thanks guys. This is Scott the Bigfoot Explorer back to do a regular video. Um, thanks for joining us. Um, I have finally recovered from the disaster that was the Streamlabs 360 live stream that I attempted to do. Crashed and burned. But, you know, you just, you don't stop. It doesn't matter that I spent all Saturday um, researching and um, testing and getting it lined out, only to discover that my Wi-Fi, which I purchased new Wi-Fi, right? Um, new Wi-Fi routers, the new Google Wi-Fi home. Uh, I upped my... Um, bandwidth with uh, my internet service provider which is Cox and it's still not enough I'm gonna have to hard line in but anyway thanks for you guys who did attempt to go to the live stream um, I promise you it will get better so today what are we talking about yes the 360 degree cameras and for photos and videos for squatching is it ready for prime time? Well, it all depends on you and your patience level and your pocketbook and how much time you have. That's literally it. Um, if you have the gumption, you can do it. Today, um, and, 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 what, and what I hope to do, what I hope to do is this first part one of the 360 cams, it's going to be a basic intro, kind of telling you about which cameras I think you should get, why, a little bit of their specs, uh, how a normal person who doesn't fool with this every day can expect to deal with it. I know that kind of level of difficulty or how easy it might be. And then uh, I'm going to show you a little demo um, because really the only way to figure out if 360 degree media is something you want to dive into is to actually visualize it and interact with it. Um, there, there's no way that I can, the, the 360 degree media um, is its own format. Um, so with that said, you can't mix it with other video, standard video formats. So I can't be right here explaining to you how to do it and say, well, okay, let's cut now and go to a 360 video. And now I can talk in the background where you can interact with it. That does not exist yet. I would literally have to give you what I'm giving you right now and then turn around and just upload one 360 degree video. And I could talk throughout that video but only while I'm recording, I can't, I can't edit in sound, photos, and other standard video formats with the 360 degree video and photo formats. I know that's a mouthful, um, but if there's enough interest in this, I will take you to part two, where I will show you the. Uh, the cam that I have, the one I'm going to choose, and we'll just go through a tutorial from how to turn it on, how to link it with your camera, how to get it, how to get that final photo. I'll do that, but it, it's a lot of work and it's a lot of time, and it's best that we kind of theorize and have an intro about it first, because it may alleviate a lot of your expectations. Uh, you may get some answers and say, Man, that's just not for me. I'm, I'm glad I saw the video. I don't want one now. That's that sounds like too much, too much work and time and effort just for the little 
reward. Or you may be somebody that says, you know what? I like that. I want to be the first one to actually have a possible Sasquatch sighting or something with a 360 cam. So it it's I am going to leave it up to you guys, right? So in 2019, we have no shortages of 360 consumer camera choices. And a 360 camera takes photo or video in a 360 degree field of view for amazing 3D like three third person perspective of your environment. And the way it does this, I'll go ahead and show you one right now. This is the Mad Venture 360 camera. And this is the Rico Theta V 360 camera. Both do photo and video. Notice those two lenses. The consumer cameras have two lenses. Pro cameras have more than two. So we're going to look at the two for the two cameras. These cameras are extreme ultra wide uh, lenses, anywhere from 180 to 270 degree field of view lenses. And the way these work, the way these work is when it takes a photo. At the same time, it takes two photos, one in front, one in the back. And when that photo is done, it resides on this camera in a flat plane. So just imagine a piece of paper and you draw two circles on that piece of paper and then you sketch something in there. And, and, and that's the photo of whatever you took, right? That's how it would look if you took the raw photo straight from here put it on your desktop and viewed it with any type of photo viewing or editing software. It'd just be two circles. That's it. So you then you're like, okay, what's the deal with this then? But, eh. Well, if you're interested in 360 degree photography or videography for squatching, you're going to have to understand that it's a new technology. It's a new format. The whole format what it's doing is it's taking two photos and then software from an app processes that photo. Okay. And when it processes that photo, it then stitches the photo on both of those planes of that circle and then warps it around a 3D model of a sphere. It's called an uh, equirectangular um coordinate plane and it warps that photo over um so that's the principle behind it you have a 360 camera it's easy to take the photos take a picture you take video but you have to process that video on the mobile phone the mobile device let's let's just say that and then once it processes that new 360 degree processed interactive media, photo or video, it can only be viewed in certain places. Certain sharing applications and software that allow for and read a 360 degree format. What do we do with standard pictures every day, right? You take a picture, you text it to your friend, your mom, your dad. You take a picture, you get on Facebook, Instant Messenger, you send that to a friend. You get on Facebook and just post it as a post with an image. Boom, right? You may open an email, you send it to your desktop, you attach a photo or insert it in the body of the email and you send it. And it's a photo. It's just a photo, static photo. <laughs> well, if you took that photo and did the same thing, well... People would not get the 360 interactive ability because whatever apps or software that they're using to look at a photo or video may not have the uh, formats to view it interactively. So you're limited to the shareability of this media and what you can do with it. The editing of it in and of itself to bring it into a non-linear 
editor such as Adobe Premiere CC or uh, a Mac Final Cut environment. They're just now getting plugins for you to bring this type of footage in and edit it. And with that said, only 360 degree formatted video can be edited. You can't take a 360 degree formatted video and then take a standard video and mix it on that timeline of the editor and then spit that out, put it up on YouTube, and then you have a regular video, a standard video in HD. And then when you want the 360 to turn into an interactive visual aid, it, it, it doesn't work that way. It won't work that way. So any media that you take like this has to be a standalone. It has to be a standalone all by itself, shared. The only platforms that will read 360 images and photos currently are the Google Photos app, YouTube, Facebook. Right now, that's it. And there are limitations on that, which means if you have a 4K 360 video, Facebook will only allow, um, I think Facebook is, where is it? Yeah. yeah, Facebook will only allow a 1.75 gigabyte 360 video file. So to put that into perspective, um, a real world example to perspective is a 4K 360 video of about 2.5 minutes long is 1.3 gigabytes and the cap size is 1.75 so that's 2.5 minutes 4k 360 imagery to Facebook that's it HD you might get I don't know four to five minute long video okay that might not be a problem for some folks but we have to know these things for YouTube, it's a bit different. YouTube's got a max file size of 128 gig, which is, you know, we'll never really be putting out a 128 gig file. Although, I would love to know Tracy Arnold's uh, Hiking with Sasquatch out, out, out. I'd love to know the file size of his 11 hour live stream. I'd, I would really almost want to travel there to see how he deals with it. Anyway, um, but YouTube's going to be your place to put these things and to share it out out there. But it's just it's just got to be the video, with whatever you want to explain has to be inside the video. Well, yes, yeah, Scott, that's what we usually do anyway. But a lot of us edit. Look at uh, Big Foot Odyssey. He goes and takes the footage. He talks in his footage, but he puts it together in a. a edited workflow so it all comes together to give you a show so if you're if you're if you're about just uploading and not editing 360 degree media could be one of those things for you right um so the basic let's let's go with the basic principle you generally need the camera. You turn the camera on. You need your mobile device. You download the appropriate app that matches your camera from the camera manufacturer. They'll all have their 360 degree apps that talk to the camera. And all the consumer 360 cameras are that way. You've got to have an app. Why do you have to have that? You don't have to have the app to video and take pictures. You can turn this on right now and just take one picture, 
take a video and go around. Yeah, it's fine. What are you going to do with it? Back to what we're going to do with it. It's got to be processed in order for it to be a true 360 interactive experience. I mean, that's what it is. That's what 360 is about. If that's not something that's your bag and you want to fool with, then Bigfoot Explorer has just answered that question for you. If you're still locked in and you want to know a little bit more and you're still intrigued and curious and you're still, you know, you like tech a little bit too, like like me, you know, you want to know more. So what you would do is, plus there are other things in here. So if you hit the button on this camera to take a photo and it's 360 degrees, just think about it. The button's right here to take the photo. And we're not talking about video, we're talking about photo. But if I were to take that picture, this is a 360 degree image. If I took that picture, my hand would be like a third of the entire image because I couldn't pull it away fast enough to ching, take the picture. So you got to go into the app and set up like a three second lag or a 10 second lag and then It'll beep and tell you, beep, 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 okay? So they're basically the same way. All the cameras interact with their appropriate app. The appropriate app and Wi-Fi are needed to talk to one another, the mobile device and the camera, because even once you're done shooting the video, shooting the photo, it has to be transferred to the mobile device so it can be processed through the software to be created and stitched. Once that happens, then you can download it uh, either to another folder on your device or just leave it where wherever it's at on the phone. But then you'd have to figure out where it's at on, on the phone. And you can then go to you, YouTube and do your standard up, upload of the video and once it's uploaded YouTube will recognize that as being a 360 formatted video and it will play it that way and people on their desktop can take their mouses and fool around with it and zoom in and people on their mobile devices can pinch to zoom and pan why why might this be something that's worthwhile, right? For squatching. It could be an invaluable asset for recording 360 degree views for possible hiding or peeking Sasquatches. Think of Robert Dotson and those photos we saw of his peeking out. Think of um, Richard Borchardt down in Florida, one of Kerry Arnold's friends that they did a show with. They're in those mangroves type bush, thick palmettas, um, you're on a narrow trail, I mean, it would be an awesome asset to just hike that trail doing a video or with photo, because you can take photos whenever you want, your phone, just boom, you think something's looking at you, you hear something, you don't even have to point it at it, Sasquatch might, might perceive you as not being a threat. If you're not looking their way or pointing somewhat something their way, you're just kind of walking along like you're not looking at them, minding your own business, talking to nothing. Would that help? Could it be possible? Sure, it could be possible. And you could then go back home, turn on your phone, Wi-Fi and transfer said photo video with Sasquatch to mobile device in the app, process it, watch it and, and stop it and zoom in and go to this corner and zoom in and go to that corner and zoom in and zoom back out. And let's say you did find something. Damn, look, I see a hand or a foot or it looks like a face, right? Well, how am I going to share that? Well, you could share the whole video to YouTube or you could take a bunch of screenshots of the 360 photos zoomed in. These are things you got to think about um, in terms of 360 degree technology for squatching. 
these things were meant for like action camera folks and people doing cinematic work. The stabilization is outstanding on these. The shots that you can get are truly breathtaking if you know how to use it right. It makes it look very professional. But we're wanting to know, could that work? Could that possibly aid us in our search? I think it could. But you just got to get past the learning curve. Um, let's see. At the end of the day, the 360 camera is just another tool for the possibility of documenting Sasquatch. Um, so let's go into... I'm going to show y'all and tell y'all a little bit of the camera choices that I would give y'all. Again, this is the Ricoh Theta V. This is the Mad Venture 360 cam. The other two that I'll put in there are the GoPro Fusion and the Insta 360 X. And we're going to check that out real quick. Okay. So here is the Ricoh Theta V. I'll, I'll have links to all these in the description below, but you can read about the Theta. Um, this one here, if you look right here, you know, here's your lens, your camera, status lamp, microphone, shutter button to take the photo. This is your wireless lamp, capture mode, record, video recording lamp, it tells you. Um, has a microphone terminal that you can put in there, your USB terminal, blah, 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 blah. So that is the Rico Theta. I'll have a link in the description there. Uh, the other is the Mad Venture. I own the Mad Venture. And I really like this little cam. Um, it's one of the only, I think it's the only one that is fully waterproof. It'll do 4K panoramic Vimeo video. It'll do 7K images. Um, that's that one. The other one, um, this is roughly about 250 bucks. The Rico Theta, I think, comes in at like it's just under 400, like 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 350 or 370. Um, GoPro Fusion, GoPro, just look at that. That thing is six. Hundred bucks. I would not recommend that. If you got the money to burn, sure. But you know, this is an excellent 360 camera. But you're going to pay a premium, and you're still going to wonder if this is right for you. I mean, the niche that we're talking about here. I mean, any niche to just include a 360 degree camera or photo or media is a niche. But now you're talking about it for another niche. Bigfooters, but I do recommend it. It's a good camera. The other one that's the sleeper out of them all is the Insta 361 X. Um, brand new. They have an older model that's not bad, but the stabilization on this is almost like it's almost like a gimbal. It's unbelievable. Let's see what the price is on that. I hadn't checked it in a while. Price is four hundred. So, is a new kind of your Insta 361X and your Rico Theta V are roughly about 400 bucks. Mad Venture is kind of your budget, but perfectly capable at about 250, 300. Uh, let's see what it is by. I forget. 309. So I was about right. Plus, with the Mad Venture. You get an accessory kit. Comes with uh, comes with a little stand. It comes with this little selfie stick, a little case, and all that good stuff. The other ones don't. Um. So that's that. Those are my recommendations to look into and research. Um. Next, what we're going to show you real quick. I'm sorry. We're going to show you, it's just no real easy way to put the point across to what a 360 camera and the media will do. So we're just going to show you. This is 
something that I did for a good friend of mine who lets me hunt his place up in uh, Tylertown, Mississippi. I have about 250 acres of Mississippi backwoods to play around in. And it's a place that I'm going to go squatch hunting now. Um, it's a very squatchy looking area, whatever that may mean to anyone who gets it. But I've never actually been here with the knowledge that I have about Sasquatch, especially being in the South now. But I made this with 360 degree uh, photos. This was a project. It was a very expensive and long Long, pro long project because I had to literally go by web hosting in order to host this. What you're seeing is 360 degree media, okay, inside of a third party 360 presentation software. That's right. We're not going to get all down and dirty in there, but it took a long time to put this out as actually being a link. I can share this link. I may put it. I'll, I'll, I'll put the link in the description below so you guys can see how it works on a mobile device and a desktop device. So I went out there with the Mad Venture with this project in mind. This is a 360 image. Here you see I have a graphic and... The professionals that do this, they put a graphic there to cover up the tripod legs that the camera is on. Um, virtual tour, 360 GeoJaw multimedia mapping. That's me. It's a side business, my little mapping side business that I do. This whole presentation here could easily be something that people trying to sell land or promote their property would spend a few grand on what I'm showing you to present their property. That's what it would cost, what I went and did. Putting it all up on the web, having a dedicated um, domain name for it, all the photos in it, interacting, all these little information about the property with the photo. I have a map of the entire place right here you can zoom in on this map and you can zoom down each orange point represents a 360 image uh, as we tour the property you can see if I go over it they each got names they correspond to these images up here they also correspond to these call outs what which are there to guide you through the tour going right will bring you through the tour the green outline is Mr. Ron's uh, property boundary. You can see he's got McGee's Creek here. So we've got awesome creek frontage here. Beautiful place. Um, so that's that's one of the aspects of the map. You can also have a, a Google map to showcase things and see where you're at. That's all fine and dandy. Um, and let's just move right along. So this is the driveway. This is 360. So imagine yourself walking a narrow hiking trail in the summer with thick vegetation. This is actually a road, and the 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 wood line has been cleared on either side, so it's pretty wide. So a hiking trail would be a little more narrow, so you'd have a little bit more field of view. But this is what you can expect as far as zooming. The resolution is not that great because what happens is, yeah, it might be a 4K or a 7K image, but what happens when you 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 warp that image to fit a 3D sphere? It's 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 going to be warped and it's going to be pulled. That's why you see it that way. The very thing that gives 360 its selling point is actually, you know, in the terms of 4K and 7K. That's why the resolution is not as good. Now, video, it'll look better. But in photo, when you zoom in, you know, I'm not saying it's bad. I mean, you could definitely study every aspect of your surrounding for hours to see if there was a squatch or a hand or a foot, if you heard something, right? And that's just photo. You can stop the video and do the same thing and move that video around. 
pause it, move it, and zoom in and take a screenshot of it. Okay? So we'll just run through this little tour so you can see some different things. So that's the road into his place. This is his front driveway. There's my car right there. You know, you can look all around this place. Look up, look down. There's my graphic where the, you, you can almost see a little bit of the, uh, the tripod leg, like right there. I didn't cover it up all the way. Okay, so we'll move on the tour. I'll go to his backyard. This is a cool backyard. So they got little icons you can put photos in. That's from his back porch. Turn it like this. There's his back porch. And there's Ron right there. There he is, sitting on the porch wondering, what in the hell am I doing in 100 degree heat with like 95% humidity in the middle of August at like 2 p.m. Sweating my, you know, what's off. So let's keep going. Here's his nice little garden. I'm able to showcase that well. Cool little garden area. Now it takes some good photos now. I mean the saturation, it's punchy, man. It looks good. This is uh, in back the house. There's well, it's on the side back of the house. There's this chicken coop. We got some little text here. You can read, you can put stuff in. If y'all are interested in how to do this type of stuff, um, 360 presentations I can help with that because I know this intimately uh, you, you can put videos in it so you know here's me uh, that same day I uh, went and brought the drone I did a 360 tour walking the place and I also put the drone up and got some cool footage of the place food plots from above Hunters would love that. There's McGee's Creek. That's pretty cool, man. Yeah, so you can put that in the presentation too. So we're going to go along. We don't need to look at a lot of the stuff. I'm taking up too much time, too much of y'all's time. Y'all can click uh, this link in the description and go look at this uh, virtual 360 tour if y'all want. But I'm going to bring you to my drone shop. Boom, there's a tiny planet. We zoom in. Ah, how do you like that? Each one of these icons represents a 360 image, just like up here and just like on the map. Each one of these are one of these. At any time, you can press it and go right back. This, now, DJI has drones that will do um, 360 photos but I don't have a new drone I have an older drone so I had to manually take this picture and what I mean by that is it took me 52 images to make this one 360 degree aerial photo so you get the drone up there you aim the camera you take your first picture now you have to angle the camera on the gimbal about 35 degrees and take a picture right there then you have to do another 35 degrees 40 degrees whatever it was I have it in a notebook take that photo and then you have to do that and you pan out you you rotate the drone but keep some overlap and you do the same thing then you go 30 40 degree 30 40 degree then keep doing that and I had to do that for every one of it took 52 images then those are just standard images so then I had to download those off the drone I purchased some expensive stitching software and had to learn how to use that which was a pain stitched them and blended it and then I had the one image and then I had to come put it in this presentation so this is like one of my holy grails of 360 degree imagery right here. I love it. And I think it's damn fine. Um, so with that said, last photo I'm going to show y'all. It's McGee's Creek. Watch this. Boom. We're at the creek side. 
Here's a picture of what it looks like when I went in the water because I was so hot after this. Trump's in all the way from the front to the back of the, of the creek. That's right, fans. I freaking shredded my clothes and jumped in the creek. I was so hot. But this is what you can expect. The things that you can do with it. Zoom, zooming in. To try to get things. Let's go to the creek entrance. We'll be fully encapsulated into the canopy of the trees here. Actually Photoshop the, uh, the tripod out of this one. So this is in the bush, man. So, you know, you want to zoom in. This is what you can expect with the camera. Zoom in on stuff. See how it's a bit fuzzy? I mean, it's not bad. But it's still not as clear as I want it to be. And that's that's on the highest setting for uh, the I think I did I think I did this with the Rico. The Rico Theta. Um what's the theta specs on image? Still image. It's barely it's barely 5K for a still image. So the Mad V actually takes a 7K. So the imagery, the resolution would be a little bit better if I had used the Mad V, but I wanted to use the uh, Theta because it, it, it actually uh, produces a prettier photo, an aesthetically pleasing, punchy, saturated image as opposed to the Mad V, which has more resolution now. Okay. So there's the demo. That's the demo of that. I don't have any video to show you yet. Um, let's go back to the webcam. That's, uh, that's pretty much going to be it on the intro to 360 cams. I hope, you'll got, I hope you guys enjoyed it and, and learned a little bit, learned a little bit of an intro into what this is about and what it might take uh, to do something. If there's enough interest, I will go through the tutorial to show y'all actually how to use this, how to turn it on, how to pair it, what it looks like. I'll record my phone screen of the app actually working with this thing. Um, and then that would be like a part two and part three, part three would be the actual 360 video of me like out in the bush. I'll do a 360 video where you can interact with it and see what it's really about. So if there's enough interest, let me know in the comments what y'all thought, what you think, if you liked it. Um, give me a thumbs up, please like subscribe and, uh, until next time folks, hopefully we will get that live stream software, um, ironed out because man, it ate my lunch. And again, I thank everybody who did put the time in and go there. Uh, I hated letting y'all down. I was so pumped up and ready to go, but you know, that's life. Life, uh, life is meant to put you in perspective and tell you, hey, you're not quite ready. So that's it. We will see you next time. Much appreciated. God bless and squatch on.